In this video, we're going to discuss function composition. And our ultimate goal is to prove that the composition of injective functions is injective, the composition of surjective functions is surjective, and the composition of bijective functions is bijective. Let's start with some definitions. So if A and B are sets, a function from A to B is a triple, f comma a comma b, where f is a subset of a cross b, so it's a relation between a and b, with the properties that for every a in the set capital A, there's a b in the set capital B, so that the pair a comma b is an element of f. And if a b1 is an element of f and a b2 is an element of f, then b1 is equal to b2. The first condition essentially says that when we are defining a function um, and we say that a is the second part of that triple there, for every a and a there's a b and b so that a comma b is an f. All right? And the second condition is what's commonly known as the vertical line test. All right? For every input there's a unique output. Now we'll typically write a function instead of writing f comma a comma b, we'll write f colon a arrow b and read it as a function f from a to b. And we'll typically write the normal function notation f of a equals b when the pair a comma b is an element of the function f. Okay. So if f from a to b is a function then the domain of f is the collection of all elements of a, okay, all, all elements little a and capital A, such that there exists a b and b so that a comma b is an element of f. In other words, it's a set of all a and a such that there exists a b and b such that f of a is equal to b. All right. So the domain of f is the subset of a uh, consisting of all the values from a which the function f assigns a value in b. Okay, the range is the collection of all elements of b such that for some a in a, a comma b is an f. Another way of writing that is to say it's the set of all elements of b such that for some a in a, f of a is equal to b. Okay, so domain and range should be familiar to you. We also have the codomain of a function. So if f from a to b is a function, the codomain of f is simply b. Okay, so when we write the triple f, a, and b, b is what's called the codomain. Okay. So if f from a to b is a function, we say f of x is injective or one to one. Whenever the following holds, if f of a1 is equal to f of a2, then a1 is equal to a2. We say f is surjective or on to when if b is an element of b, then there exists an a and a such that f of a is equal to b. And we say a function is bijective when the domain of f is all of a, when f of x is injective, and f of x is surjective. So for a function to be bijective, it has to satisfy all three of these conditions. So now we'll define the composition of two functions. If f from a to b is a function and g from b to c is a function, the composite of these two functions is a function g circle f, so g composed with f, uh, from a to c, defined as follows, g circle f of x, or g composed with f of x, is g, the value of g applied to f of x. All right, so we take x, we compute f of x, and then we compute g of that value, so g of f of x. Okay, now it's important to recognize that function composition is associative, and it's easy to see that it's associative. All right. So if we consider the left and the right hand sides, um, first the left hand side is h of g of f of x, okay, and so that would be h of the quantity g of f of x, and that simplifies to h of g of f of x. All right. And then the second one, what happens is we first compute f of x and then apply h circle g to that. The value of h circle g applied to f of x is the value of h applied to g of f of x. Okay. So ultimately they come out to the same value 
so those functions are equal. Now although function composition is associative, uh, it's important to recognize that it's not commutative, so f circle g is not going to be equal to g circle f in general. Okay, so here's the theorem we want to prove. We want to prove that if f from a to b and g from b to c are functions, three things are true. If f and g are both injective, then g of f of x is injective. If f and g are surjective, then g of f of x is surjective. And if f and g are bijective, then g circle f of x is bijective. So part one, we'll prove the bit about injectivity. So let's assume that f and g are injective functions. So to show that the composition is injective, we have to show that if a1 and a2 are elements of a, and g circle f of a1 is equal to g circle f of a2, then a1 is equal to a2. So let's let a1 and a2 be elements of a. And let's suppose that g circle f of a1 is equal to g circle f of a2. Okay, so by definition of the function composition, that's g applied to f of a1 is equal to g applied to f of a2. Okay, but g of, f, g of x is injective. So this implies that f of a1 is equal to f of a2. But also, f is injective. So f of a1 equals f of a2 implies that a1 is equal to a2. Okay, so we've shown that if g circle f of a1 is equal to g circle f of a2, then a1 equals a2. And that, of course, means that g circle f is injective if f and g are injective. So now in the second part, let's assume that f and g are surjective. We need to prove that uh, g circle f is surjective. So to prove that, we have to show that for everything in C, there's something in A so that g circle f of A is equal to C. So let's pick an element of C. Now g from B to C is surjective. So there's something in B such that g of B is equal to C. And f is surjective. So there's something, some A in A so that f of A is equal to B. All right. And now we've chosen um, A and B appropriately. So we can do the calculation with the composition. So g circle f of a is equal to g of f of a. We just picked um, f, we picked a so that f of a is b, and we picked b so that g of b is c, so it follows that g circle f of a is equal to c. Okay, so we've shown that for all c in the set big C, there's a little a in the set big A, such that g circle f of a is equal to c. It follows that g circle f is surjective if f and g are surjective. Okay, so part three, let's assume that f and g are bijective. To show that the composition is bijective, we have to show that the domain is A, g circle f is injective, and g circle f is surjective. All right, now we get two of those uh, for free because we just proved the last two parts of the theorem. We know the functions f and g are bijective, so they're both injective and surjective. It follows from our previous proofs that g circle f is injective and surjective. Okay, so we only need to show that the domain of g circle f is a. So let's let a, little a, be an element of the set big A. Since f is bijective, the domain of f is equal to a. So there's some b in b such that f of a is equal to b. Okay, but g from b to c is also bijective, so the domain of g is equal to b. So there's an element c in capital C such that g of b is equal to c. Okay, so therefore um, there exists some element of c, some element little c and big c, such that g circle f of a is equal to g of f of a is equal to g of b, which is equal to c. Okay, so we've shown that the domain of g circle f is all of a. No matter what you pick in a, g circle f assigns a value to it in c. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.